Lemsip, lemsip, lemsip. Whoa. Lemsip. Oh, this is antihistamine. Paracetamol. Bongella. <laughs> oh. Hello and welcome back to my channel. So first, I should mention that I know there's a lot of uncertainty around first term with COVID-19. I understand everything's quite up in the air at the moment, whether you should move into uni or stay at home and what's safe. I know that each uni is dealing with this differently, but I hope that whatever you choose, this video is just a little bit of a stress reliever, so you've got one less thing to worry about. Even if you end up not moving in this year or not even going to uni this year, don't worry, this video will still be here next year. So give the video a thumbs up or save it to a uni playlist so you can come back to it later. Secondly, Unite, the leading student accommodation provider, has kindly sponsored this video. They actually cancelled final term rent last year to help reduce the stress on students because they also had exams as well. It was a rough time, but I feel like that was a really bold and empathetic thing from Unite. Another innovative thing that they have is an app where you can actually meet your housemates before you move in, which personally, I think more student accommodations should have. They have residencies in over 27 different cities across the UK, and they provide homes for success for over 50,000 students each year. I will leave all important links to Unite and the stuff that I mentioned in the description box below and I would urge that you go check out their blog The Common Room where you can find additional advice on how to get ready for uni. So let's start with item number one that you should definitely bring to uni and that is personalised crockery, cutlery and Tupperware. If you're worried about having messy flatmates that use your stuff and don't wash up then having knives and forks that are clearly yours means that they won't view them as communal so they won't get lost. Everybody buys the cheapest £3 set from Ikea or Wilco and it's all the same silver basic design. Loads of my friends started this year with three plates and three sets of cutlery and they finished with a spoon and a knife. Regarding Tupperware, no student seems capable of making the perfect amount of pasta. So rather than painfully trying to eat it and finish it off, put it in a Tupperware and then you can just have it for lunch tomorrow and bung it in the microwave. Some people do this on purpose and this is called food prepping. I would highly recommend that you do this because you save money and you save time. I would also advise that you get a nice durable one, for example a Sistema one, so that it doesn't leak next to your laptop in your bag. Unite also offers arrival packs to students when you move in which has all of the essentials so it means that you don't have to lug heavy boxes and stuff of pots and pans up to uni which is good. Item number two that you should definitely bring is room decor. Now my room at home is filled with fairy lights, glow in the dark stars and when I moved into uni I wanted my room to be the same so it was nice and homely. Looking good, Miranda. Oh. Which is really good at the moment because the light's broken. <laughs> Pictures to remind you of home and family and friends will also mean a lot, as well as posters. Some of my friends even have really cool tapestries that they got off Amazon that look beautiful and they add a lot of colour to your room. Because my room was more welcoming and open, it became quite a popular social space, so a lot of people would come in and just chill at mine. Interesting. Just thought I'd update them that it is now. <laughs> It was nice having all the photos and things because they're a good talking point and can like get the ball rolling. Funny photos and pet photos are really good for breaking the ice. So number three is warm, soft, comfort clothing and a double duvet. Long hours at uni with the winter months approaching in September, warm fuzzy dressing gowns and bed socks are really going to make you feel so much more relaxed and rewarded after a long day of socialising with friends and walking around campus and meeting loads of new people. Similarly, even with a single bed like I had in first year, it is so worth investing in a double duvet. It's just like having an extra warm safety blanket at night. It's so good. It does make it harder to get out of bed for your 9am's because you're all cocooned up, but it's worth it for a good night's sleep. And one thing that a few of my friends did this year was when they were ordering their bedding, they actually did click and collect at the Argos near their uni accommodation so that they didn't have to bring it up with them so that once they'd moved in, they could just pick it up and then take it back, which I thought was really smart. And if I need to do that for next year, that's what I'll be doing. Item number four is either slippers or sliders. If you have a communal bathroom or kitchen, you will not want to walk in there with bare feet or with socks on. That's but, your shower. Yes. That is gross. The pressure. 
is actually really, really good. I wear flip-flops and I have my own bath mat. Of course, some bathrooms are cleaner than others, but it's better to be safe than sorry. And when the 4 a.m. alarms, fire alarms go off, because they will, we were woken at what time today, Miranda? Oh, I think it was about 8.15 by three fire alarms lasting about 20 seconds each really really unpleasant you'll need those on your feet they also don't have to be expensive i got mine really cheaply off amazon which again will be linked below now the fifth item that you should bring to uni is an extension cable now of course this depends on the room that you're given um for example my room in first year had loads of plugs but my room this year has one plug if you're like me and you enjoy watching films on your phone or laptop in bed if you don't have a plug socket by your bed an extension cable means that you can charge your things from far away like plug it in i often have my salt lamp in it my phone charger my computer if i need to blow dry my hair or straighten my hair i can go in there these are so underrated <music> Now coming on to the second part of the video, five things that you should not buy and not bring with you and leave at home. The first thing is Freshers wristbands. Do not get conned into buying those £100 two week Freshers wristbands because they are not worth it. I've never heard one person say, oh I'm so glad I bought my two week Freshers wristband. The problem with these bundle tickets is that they often only include specific nights or specific venues and what you want is the flexibility to kind of pick what venues, what nights. Um, you go to and kind of see where your friends are going as well. What I did is I bought individual nights that I really wanted to go to myself and then I knew that I would meet similar people at those events that I like so that was like bound to be good and I also bought them off the legitimate King's College London Student Union website so I knew that I wasn't getting scammed by any London club. I didn't book one for every night, I think I did three per week. The second item that you can leave at home is an eye mask. Unless if these help you to go to sleep every night, usually do not bring them just because people tell you to bring them. Not only do they often give out free eye masks at Freshers' Fairs, but pretty much every student accommodation will have blackout curtains. I've not been to one student accommodation which doesn't. And that is a problem because that's when I started taking afternoon naps and it was a complete shock to my body, but you're gonna need those afternoon naps, but you won't need the eye mask. So the third thing to not bring is too many books. Some people bring a lot of books with the intention of reading them during your evenings and your downtime, but often what happens is you have so much course reading and so much uni work that this enthusiasm slowly wanes and they just sit there at the back of your shelf gathering dust in a room which is most likely already pretty short on space. You can tell you're a film student and you like books too. Yeah. The receipts look stressful. I mean, it's a bit of a mess. But, 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 but. Definitely bring a favourite or two. I think I bought six in the end and I didn't touch half of them. But also it wasn't worth it for me because I had to lug them. They're heavy, books are heavy and I had to lug it from my house on the train via the tube to my accommodation. We arrived at the station. We are about 10 minutes early for the train. But I've also changed top and it's not even 10.30 yet because I've been sweating a lot. So in hindsight, that was definitely not worth it. The fourth thing not to bring to uni is plants. Please don't buy plants if you're not going to look after them. The amount of student rooms that you walk into and you see a dead spider plant in the corner because they haven't watered it for weeks is, it's, it's crazy. Oh, is this a little basil plant? We've yeah, got no, going? that's really gross and dead. And I know this might seem hypocritical because I have plants in every single video of mine, but that is because I brought my plants once I moved into uni. I would never recommend someone bring a plant from home to their student accommodation because there's soil, there's leaves, and it's, it's a bit of a hassle. So if you don't have any plants, don't buy any yet. Wait until you've moved in and you can see the kind of color palette that you're working with, the color of the curtains, your bedspread, how much space you're working with, and then buy your plants. It saves a lot of time and hassle. The fifth and final thing to not buy is sponges. Now you want the ones with handles. These will change, these will revolutionise your washing up experience and your kitchen experience at uni. Those old fashioned handheld ones become incredibly manky and you will not enjoy washing up. Whereas the new fashionable updated ones, you can put washing up liquid in the handle so you have even less grim things to touch. As well as that, you can also buy new heads for them when the tops go manky so you don't have to buy loads of new sponges, you can just 
reuse the same handle. I would also recommend that you potentially invest in some marigolds um, or just any kind of washing up glove because like I said when you're in a communal kitchen it could be a bit gross like I know some of my friends who have mouldy stuff and gross plates like you don't really want to get near that you don't want that on your hand. It will not only encourage you but hopefully your flatmates to also do the washing up so your countertops are tidy and it doesn't smell like three day old chili con carne. And that is everything. Five things you should bring and five things you should definitely leave at home. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos and I will see you next week. Have a lovely day. Bye!